you could even imagine it. Although still filled with From Software's idiosyncratic dialogue and coded messages, Elden Ring's world and backstory are a bit more transparent than other Souls games. NPCs are generally more forthcoming with exposition, items will tell you where they came from and what they're used for, and you can even ask Gideon, at one of your safe areas, the Round Table Hold, what all the story bosses are doing. What remains relatively obtuse is the heart of the game itself. What is the Elden Ring? Keep in mind, this explanation won't be exhaustive. It's simply intended to give you more insight into Elden Ring's setting, characters, and the reason you want to keep beating your head against Margit until you just go ahead and uninstall already. These are all things you can discover within the first several hours of the game, up until the events immediately after defeating Godric, the first demigod. But seeing as this is an open world game with very little restrictions, the time it takes for this context to come together might be radically different depending on how you play. So consider this your spoiler warning for roughly the first dozen hours or so. Elden Ring's setting, The Lands Between, wasn't always the desolate, miserable place we know it to be today. It was once a land of peace and prosperity, guided by the power of the Elden Ring, at the foot of the giant glowing Erd Tree in the Lands Between's capital city of Landel. The Erd Tree is similar to important trees in other mythologies, such as Yggdrasil, the tree of life most commonly seen in Norse mythology, and series such as God of War, Dragon Quest, and Secret of Mana. And while the Erd Tree is almost always visible in-game as a guide marker of your final destination, many of the items in the game are remnants of that tree. Warming stones are fragments of ruin blessed with an incantation that mimic the warmth of the Erd Tree. Golden seeds flew from the Erd Tree when the Elden Ring was shattered. Most everything you come across in Elden Ring, the eponymous ring included, have their roots in the Erd Tree. The fallen leaves tell a story, the opening cinematic tells us. And that story begins with the fall of the Lands Between after the shattering of the Elden Ring. The Elden Ring itself was seen as anchor of all lands, giver of grace, wellspring of all joy. The first ever reveal trailer describes it as that which commanded the stars, giving life its fullest brilliance. It was watched over by a group known as the Golden Order, who followed a religion or belief called the Greater Will. At some point, this belief either fell away or was polluted, and the shattering of the Elden Ring also shattered the Golden Order, although its vestiges remain. Upon first meeting Melina, the woman who becomes your maiden, a kind of guide and spirit guardian, she remarks that to seek the shards of the Elden Ring is to violate the Golden Order. This is despite the fact that those who follow the Greater Will namely the Two Fingers, the most aptly named being in any From Software game ever, command that you do so. It indicates a very clear schism between the Golden Order and this belief, the greater will, they used to follow. In this first dozen hours or so of the game, we can't quite identify who or what shattered the Elden Ring, as many of the Golden Order that we catch glimpses of have both golden hair and similar scars on their back. But if we take the original cinematic reveal trailer and some cryptic dialogue as canon, it appears that Queen Merica, ruler of Landell and the god who oversaw the Elden Ring, was at least there when the shattering took place, even if she's not directly responsible. One of the shards of the ring, known as the Rune of Death, was also stolen. When the Elden Ring was shattered, there was a shattering of a different kind. Those closest to the Erd Tree, Queen Merica's family, the demigods, were either killed or took pieces of the ring for themselves and are now known as shard bearers. These shards give them great strength, but also warped their minds, leading to an incredible war of attrition that left no victor, and broke the lands between. You can see the remnants of this war early on when exploring Stormvale Castle, as giant holes in the wall and craters in the interior tell stories of weapons of war or magic pounding on the outer perimeter. The Shattering also saw the disappearance of Queen Merica, the Greater Will supposedly abandoning all people, and the destruction of the Golden Order as it was known. In short, it was devastating. Thrust into this post-war world surrounded by secluded demigod shard bearers is you, one of the Tarnished. Tarnished are similar to Dark Souls Hollows, but on the spectrum of real dead to very alive, they mostly fall on the latter side. Some special Tarnished are called by grace, a power they alone possess to guide them to the ring, to reforge the shards of the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. You are also not the only Tarnished. The several notable ones who have either sought or are in the act of seeking the Elden Ring are mentioned in the opening cutscene. Hora Lu, Chieftain of the Badlands, 
Gold Mask, Fia the Deathbed Companion, Sir Gideon Offnir the All-Knowing, and of course, everyone's favorite party animal, the Dung Eater. What great company you keep. These other Tarnished can still be found in the world as you're playing, and have different methods of seeking the ring. But Tarnished of note, that have been found worthy, are all summoned to the Round Table Hold by their Maidens. The Round Table Hold is an agreed upon safe zone for the Tarnished, and those who wish to assist them, where no combat is allowed. Melina, agreeing to play the part of Maiden for you, gets you an invite to the Round Table Hold where a few of these Tarnished make their home, including Sir Gideon and Fia, the Deathbed Companion, also known as Fia the Hug Lady. You also meet the Two Fingers in Round Table Hold, which is not a fancy title, it's just literally what they are, real big fingers. They serve the greater will, and speak to you through interpretation by the finger reader, a kind of translator, as literal fingers seldom have literal mouths. Upon defeating Godric, the first shardbearer and demigod, but more of a distant cousin to Queen Merica than a full-blooded family member, the two fingers give you a task, not only to reforge the Elden Ring and become Elden Lord, but to restore the Golden Order, the group that watches over it. So that's the very quick answer to the question, what is the Elden Ring, in the first dozen hours or so of your adventure. Many more questions will be raised over the course of the game, and some of the history that we thought we knew may not be exactly as it was told to us, but this should serve as a great primer for your goal as you set out to explore the lands between. What other pockets of Elden Ring lore would you like us to dive into? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're here, make sure to check out our Elden Ring review and which starting class is best for you. For everything else gaming, you're already in the right place. IGN.